Hey everybody, Mike here, and in this quick video, we're going to take a look at weather station models. So let's jump right in. Now, in the world of weather forecasting and meteorology, we have a bit of a challenge. We have scientists all over the world who are constantly collecting data. And I'm talking about a lot of data. We have these computerized weather stations all over the country, and they are constantly collecting multiple points of data, temperature, air pressure, wind, etc. And we have to boil all that down and then communicate it using a map like this. Now, as you can see, this map is loaded with data, and if we were to zoom in, we would see all sorts of little symbols, and it is our job as students of meteorology to understand what those symbols mean, how to read them, and then ultimately how to use that data to forecast the weather. Fortunately for us, we have a great cheat sheet that we can use to support us in this work, and that's what we're going to use as the basis of our uh, exploration here today. Here you can see the handout that I'm talking about. Now this is a page from the recently revised New York State Earth Science Reference Tables. You can grab your own copy of the tables for free using the link that's down below in the description. So let's jump right in. At the top of this sheet is a full labeled example of a weather map symbol or a station model. So let's zoom in and let's break down what this actually means piece by piece. One thing to remember is that the purpose of a station model is to communicate a large amount of information and data, but in a very simple, tidy little package that's easy to draw and easy to share. And that's what we see here. But we need to be able to make sense of this. So let's do that. We'll take a little tour around starting in the top left hand corner with this number. 57, which is always going to represent your air temperature at this moment. Now you'll notice the air temperature is 57 degrees Fahrenheit, but we don't have the degrees Fahrenheit on the station model. Again, that goes back to our goal of saving space and keeping things simple. Just know that if you're decoding a station model, you will have to add those units in as I have done here always directly below the temperature and a little bit to the left is going to be your visibility, how far you're able to see before your view is obstructed by the atmosphere, clouds, fog, etc. And that's always measured in miles. So this three actually reflects a visibility of three miles. Directly to the right of the visibility and related is the current weather conditions, whether it's raining, snowing, sleeting, thunderstorms, etc. And each type of weather has its own symbol. You don't need to memorize it. It is on the handout. Um, but I'll give you an example here. This three dots in the triangle pattern represents steady rain. So it means at this moment there is steady rain falling. Down the bottom left is a very important number. This is our dew point temperature which again, it's a temperature, so we'd have to add in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, dew point, if you're not aware, is a really important number because how close the dew point is to the air temperature reveals how humid and moist the air is and how likely you are to have clouds and precipitation. Here you can see the dew point and the temperature are very close together, and that reflects a high humidity. If you're interested in learning more, go check out some of my other videos on dew point and relative humidity. Now, up to the top right, we see a three-digit number which represents our air pressure or our barometric pressure. It's always written in three digits on a station model, even though in reality it's always going to be a three or four digit number plus a decimal plus units. So this is the trickiest part. You need to be able to code and decode the air pressure to know what it actually means. And we'll go into that more in a moment. But in this case, 107 actually means the air pressure is 1010.7 millibars. Now beneath that is the pressure trend. Is that air pressure rising, falling, or remaining steady? Now at a glance, I see that downward uh, sloping line there. That tells me it's been dropping over the last six hours or so. And the number tells me by how much. But again, tricky little thing here. It's not 45 millibars. That would be a very dramatic drop. Rather, it's 4.5 millibars. So you need to know to go and drop that decimal point in between your two digits and add your units. Next, in the middle, we have our cloud cover. So 
we're always going to have this circle in there, and the degree to which it's colored in reveals how much of the sky is covered by clouds. Here, it's completely colored in, so we have 100% cloud cover, also known as overcast. Finally, our wind. So we're always going to have a line coming out from the center, and that's going to represent the direction that the wind is coming from. And that line will always have some smaller lines coming off it, which I refer to as feathers. And those tell you how fast the wind is blowing at this moment. So in this case, the longer line is extending to the top left, which means the wind is coming from that direction. So if it were a compass, it would be coming from the north or north-northwest. Now, I have one long feather at the end and one short feather. And that's going to represent a wind speed of 15 knots. And I know that because each long feather represents 10 knots and each short feather represents 5 knots. And so there you have a quick walkthrough. But the nice thing is on this uh, data table here, it's all pretty clearly laid out. Now let's turn our attention to the bottom of the page where we can start to make sense of all of the information that's actually provided for you. Let's jump right in, starting on the left-hand side, where we see a key that explains the wind speed symbols. So you can see you can use this key to determine how fast the wind is blowing or to communicate how fast the wind is blowing. The basic idea is that the direction is where the wind's coming from, and the length of the, and number of feathers represents how fast it's blowing. Okay, so you can pay attention to that. Right beneath it, we have a simple compass rose that will help you with wind direction. Again, can't reiterate it enough. We always name wind for where it's coming from, not where it's going to. Now, beneath the wind direction, we have something that's actually not on the station model, and that is a symbol for air pressure. And this is pretty straightforward. This would be if you had a weather map. If you've ever seen a giant H or L on a weather map, they represent air pressure uh, bodies on the area shown on the map. So an H would be a high pressure area, which by the way is typically better, clearer, nicer weather. And an L would be low pressure weather, which is typically worse weather, stormy, rainy, snowy, etc. Now down beneath this, we have a very important box here which explains how you code and decode the air pressure. If you remember before, air pressure on a station model is always a three-digit number, like you see here the first example being 410. But what that actually reflects is an air pressure of 1041.0 millibars. And so you need to be able to convert using this information from short to long and from long to short versions of air pressure. So let's just look at some rules really quickly. If you're converting from short to long, here's how you can do this. If the number on the station model, the, the quote-unquote short version, is less than 500, like 410 here, you're going to add a 10 before it, then you're going to add a decimal point before the last digit, and you're going to add your units, which will always be millibars. If the number on the station model is greater than 500, like the bottom two examples here, 987 and 872, you're going to add a 9 before it, not a 10, a 9. You're then going to add your decimal to the right before the trailing number and your units of millibars. Now, you may be in a situation where you have to convert from the long version to the short version. So here's how you do this. It's very simple. You're basically going to take the actual air pressure that you have measured, you're going to get rid of the 9 or the 10, whatever it starts with. You're going to get rid of the decimal, and you're going to get rid of the units, and you'll be left with a three-digit number, and that's what goes on your station model. Now, moving on, in the middle, we have uh, all of our weather condition symbols, and this is very straightforward. Um, you see symbols for both different types of precipitation, rain, snow, drizzle, but also the amount of it, the frequency of it. Is it heavy, moderate, uh, light? Is it regular and steady, or is it intermittent, which means on and off? As well as in the bottom, we see different types of thunderstorms, thunder rain, thunder snow, thunder hail, etc. And then down below that, we'll see more unique situations, hail, tornadoes, hurricanes, sleet, etc. So this is very straightforward, and it's very handy to have it on the sheet ready to go. 
Next up would be cloud cover or sky cover. Now we saw one example that was overcast, so it was all colored in. And you can see the different ways we would notate whatever the cloud cover happens to be. These symbols tell you what the pressure trend has been, rising, falling, rising, then falling, etc. And you can use these symbols for the pressure trend portion of the station model. And then we have our fronts. Now, again, these don't show up on station models, but rather they show up on weather maps, cold fronts, warm fronts, etc. Check out my other videos to learn more about weather fronts. And then we finally have some miscellaneous uh, symbols that we might use for unique circumstances, smoke, dust, fog, etc. And then beneath that, different symbols for different types of precipitation showers. It's all fairly straightforward, and it's laid out for you. You just have to take the time to navigate what you're looking for. So let's take a minute and look at an example. So if you look at this picture here, clearly we are experiencing a pretty heavy snowstorm. So let's take a look at what a station model for this condition might look like. First of all, we'll start with the cloud cover, which is clearly overcast. So I need a completely colored in circle. Now, I'm in the northeast here of the United States, and a lot of our big blizzards are called nor'easters, and these are storms that ride up the east coast, and what we end up with is this wind that blows out of the northeast off the ocean, dumping moisture back on the land. So let's imagine that's what's happening here. So I have a wind coming from the northeast, which looks like that. You draw your line towards the northeast. And uh, let's say it's fairly windy, so maybe 25 knots. So two long feathers, one short feather. Clearly, it's got to be below freezing. We're dealing with Fahrenheit here, so let's say the air temperature is 24. That's going to get written there in the top left. Um, as you can see, very low visibility because of the snowfall and the cloud cover, so maybe a quarter mile or so. And let's say we have heavy snow falling, so there's your symbol for that. I know my dew point has to be pretty close to my temperature because there's snow falling. So let's say our dew point is 23. That will go down on the bottom. And I also know that my air pressure has to be reasonably low because if we're getting clouds and precipitation, it's going to be lower pressure. So let's make our air pressure 997.2 millibars, which, if we convert, should look like this on our station model. Let's also say we've had a decreasing air pressure. It's been dropping by, let's say, 3.1 millibars over the last six hours. Here's what that would look like. And then finally, we are all set and we have a complete station model. So I'm going to challenge you to create your own station model. So on the next slide, I'm going to give you some conditions. And then I'm going to ask, just pause the video really quick and try and sketch out what the station model should be. And then when you unpause, I'll show you what it should look like. Let's take a look. Oh, here we have a beautiful sunny day. And here are our conditions. So take a moment and hit the pause button. And when you're done, you can come back and unpause. And I will show you what the station model should look like for this condition. Okay, we're back. So now I'm going to jump ahead, and this is what you should have come up with. You can see uh, clear sky. Uh, you can see uh, south uh, east wind at 5 knots, temperature of 77, um, 52 for the dew point, 4 miles of visibility, 1012.4 millibars pressure with a rise of 2.1 millibars. And there you have it. So I hope that is helpful. And uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.